this one's in the registry. And, um, and were they – was there a true Shelby connection to it outside of the, the rear – uh, the rear deck lid and taillight assemblies. No. Okay. See, see, and that's something else I'm learning because I always thought there was there was a connection to Carroll Shelby in these cars because there were so many, not so many, but enough of the Shelby components that gave it a Shelby visual. You know, if you drove by and didn't read what it was, you would assume that it was a Shelby just based on the uh, the, the look from the back. Sure. Yeah, I get that all the time. The um but it was just a, it was strictly a package that the California auto dealers came up with with Ford to grab more of this, the market for California. They wanted something special, kind of like nowadays you have the Texas edition trucks and right. whatnot. Well, and, and that's pretty cool. And if you go around the country, those what I call dealer group cars, they pop up from time to time. But none has ever taken the the. Uh, uh, the the enthusiasm of the car culture as a California special did because it's actually quite a desirable car in in the car culture in general but definitely in the Mustang uh, families people looking for a California special it, it's rare that you see one um, and, and then much less to see one in the shape yours is in because yours is I'm assuming looking at the wheels and tires on it or at least the wheels on it that is bone stock yes so Those are the no mods ones. at all um not really. How long um, have you had this car? Uh, about three years. And where did you buy it locally? I bought it in Dallas. In Dallas. So you bought it out of Dallas. Yes. From you an individual or auction? Uh, from a uh, class car dealer. Okay. Yeah. So do you know the history of the car? Who's owned it through the years or no? Uh, some of it uh, came with quite a bit of documentation. As as far as I can tell, we are the fourth owners. That's okay. all? Um, wow. And it... Um, the uh, engine and transmission were overhauled uh, up north. Um, In South Dakota. No. North no. Dakota. <laughs> Not quite that. It was more, more eastern. Okay. Um, uh, Have you done anything to it other than drive it and yeah, spend a lot of money buying it? Uh, cleaned it up a little bit. I uh, got the interior finished, uh, put a dress-up kit on the engine, put a four-barrel on it. It had originally had a two-barrel. Really? Yeah. The um, car came with a two-barrel. I'm did. surprised. Um, but you said before that you would just – it was c basically in California it was an option package available on a Mustang. Yes. So it could have been anything from an inline six-cylinder up to the four, what, 68, 428? Uh, yes. 428 motor and everything in between. Yes. So it wasn't necessarily a performance car. It was more of a, a visual car uh, that is what made the California special. Yeah, you could, you could build them any way you wanted to build them. Um, all the, the amount of options that they had at the time, the sky was the limit. And on the interior, you said you redid the interior. Is the interior have anything unique to California Special, or is the interior pretty much pure Mustang? Pretty much pure Mustang. Pure Mustang. And any interior badging or anything on it, like no. a glove box door, nothing? No. I know it's got the script on the side. The, um, uh, the only uh, uh, only branding or badging that he did was the script california special in the rear quarters the side scoops with the gtcs um and that the california specials also did not have the run running pony on the grill okay um 64 and a half all the way through they've always had the running the running pony the with the tricolors on them the california special did not it was a blacked out grill and with um at the time uh lucas fog lights which that has the original lucas fog lights on it and um uh, and then hood pins. Uh, those were the telltale signs of the California uh, Special. Nothing in the VIN tag or the body code tag identifies a California Special? No. They um, they have the run of them. Uh, like I said, it, it's in the registry, and I have the, the registry book, so all the California Special VINs are listed in okay, there. But okay, okay. No so there is a way to identify yes, what would have been a California, uh, a special. California Special. And how many of them are in the registry? If you said about 3,900 were produced, how many of them are accounted for at this point? Do you know? I don't remember. Pretty sizable amount or? Um, fair, fair amount. Is it? And and the registry is CaliforniaSpecial.com or something like that? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, it, it's pretty basic. Uh, and then in, I believe it was 2004 or 2006, they started the uh, badging and option for the newer model Mustangs I've for California I, I, I've seen that as well. And do you remember how much back then the option code would have been? 
Uh, actually, I have the. Um, Tell me you have the window sticker. I do have the window sticker. Really? Oh, yeah. how cool is that? And it's a, it, I believe that car retailed for that one. Mine in particular was like thirty nine hundred dollars. Wow. <laughs> well, that, but that, that was actually a lot. A lot of money in sixty. That was a lot, of, yeah, uh, because uh, a Corvette, a Corvette back then was like six seven thousand dollars. Yeah, but he'd rather have a California. I'm not talking about what he'd rather have. I'm just <laughs> talking about the price. I'm trying trying to compare it to something that I could relate to. Um, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so that was an expensive car. So how many of them are in Houston that you know about? There used to be a white one up in Humble, um, owned by a uh, a young man, and he kind of tore everybody's it up. a young man to us. To us, that's correct. Well, this was a high school kid. Hell, he's a young man. I, I don't know how many are in Houston. Um, uh, are you a member of a club? No. You're not a member of Northside Mustangs no. or Houston Mustangs? And because? I uh, just haven't joined in clubs. Haven't gotten around to it. <laughs> you're, just, you're just one of those uh, kind of guys that you're going to be an independent. And, um, well, Northside Mustang and Houston Mustang clubs are pretty active clubs here in town. They, they have a lot of events to go to and a lot of uh, what I call self-help. So, you know, those, those clubs, they kind of get together and, and kind of help each other as people are doing stuff to their cars. And I always thought that's pretty cool. I know the Jeep, the Jeep folks do, do a lot of that as well. Yeah. Um, we, we, we actually did a broadcast. Um, it was a couple of years ago, I guess. It was down at the Lone Star Flight Museum down at uh, Ellington Airport. Had the National Mustang. The National Mustang event. Did you go to that? No. You should have gone to that. They'd have loved your car there. I mean, there was, uh, they had probably 400, 400 plus cars. From all over the United States. That were oh, wow. showing, plus, you know, probably another 400 people that just showed up with Mustangs. And everything from, what was there, the Barn Find GT350 that still had the spider webs under the hood. Oh, wow. Uh, it was a 68, 60, 68 GT350. It was that, uh, that uh, bullet green color car. Um, all the way up to brand new stuff that was brought there by some of the dealers and stuff. But really, uh, really fun event, and they they would love to see your car. Um, yeah, and, and if you kind of watch, a- actually, if you watch our uh, Facebook page in real time on Facebook, uh, I post up a lot of the Northside Mustang and uh, Houston Mustang uh, Club events on our on our page again. But yeah, Go to one one time and, and show that. You, it'll attract a crowd. People will love to see that car. I've been looking into that. Uh, of course, now that we're getting back to normal, I'm going to try to get out to more things. Um. Well, we, we have a connection. Name is Randy Weldon. Mm-hmm. And a uh, great guy, and he would welcome you. And uh, He was he on the board of the National Mustang Club yeah. for a long time. Yeah. And uh, he lives in the Woodlands, doesn't he? Yep. Yeah. And uh, anyway, yeah, you would you would appreciate it. Yeah, well, I, I can tell you from experience, um, I'm not a member of a Corvette club currently. They won't let him back. <laughs> no, they won't. They Actually, uh, I've been arrested when I showed up at the door one time. <clears throat> but at any rate, um, I gained some lifelong friends there, Bill and Sharon Seitz mm-hmm. and others. And um, this was back in 19, don't tell anybody, 77. Okay. So that, and we've remained friends all these all these many years. That's great. So uh, yeah, uh, and uh, a wealth of resources. Hey man, you know I'm looking for a hubcap. I'm looking for a radiator cap. I'm looking for this. Looking for that. Oh yeah, well you use this place. Don't use that place. That that kind of insider. You ever been in a car club before? Um no, I haven't. Uh, there was a group of guys that we grew up. We all had hot rods. And yeah yeah. Um, this is actually my in, second in, in the Dakotas? Uh, actually, here. Uh, uh, mostly they used horse and wagons in the Dakotas still, but, you know. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> do you, so ever, do so you ever get back up there to ride some uh, ponies? or uh, no? uh, I haven't been in uh, since I was a child. Okay, that's good. Uh, so you're a, are you a Houstonian now? Yeah, I, well, I was born and raised here. I was born in Bel Air. Um, and born did and you go to Bel Air High School? I did. I went to Westbury High School. Did you? I did. Okay. Are they rivals? Small world. They oh, were, yeah. They, they were. They were. Yeah, they were big rivals. Back in the day. Back in the day. Mm-hmm. So what drew you to the California Special um, versus a, a bazillion other Mustangs that are out there? Because of its uniqueness. 
when it popped up, my, my wife and I were looking for another Mustang. Like I said, I had a, a 65 when I was younger, and a coupe, nothing real special about it. And uh, I've always been a Mustang guy. And when we were looking, um, we were actually looking at a, a fully restored 66 coupe, and this one popped up, and I knew what it was. I knew the uniqueness of it, and uh, I showed the boss, and she said, I like the way it looks, so that was the deal. She wasn't interested in how unique it was initially. She just liked the way it looked. So Good color. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she liked the taillights, the Shelby, tail, the Shelby style taillights. But uh, after I explained everything to her, she was like, oh, yeah. So we wound up getting that. And, uh, Did y'all ever take it out to road trips or anything? Not really road trips. We, uh, we'll we take it out around uh, Is she here town. today with you? She is. She is. Yeah. She's, yeah, there she is waving. Where is she? Oh, she's, there she is. She's watching the car, <laughs> making sure nobody puts their greasy, grimy fingers on it. <laughs> the, uh, um, but we take it out. Uh, it's a weekend car, and we take it out on pretty days on to these uh, events. Cruise ends, yeah. Yes. Yeah, lots of fun. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you ever it. go to Nifty 50s up in the woodlands? I have not been yet. That's yeah. a good one for you to go yeah, to. Yeah, they're they're off. They Their last event was last weekend, but last Saturday. Spring. But in come You're spring, back. usually they have a big Valentine's Day event up there and then uh, they usually come back on about uh, the middle of april okay but nifty 50s it's, it's another good event it, and it's very uh, i'll say a little bit more c controlled of you have to be i think it's uh 86 and prior to get into what i call the corral so it's it's not as diverse as this it's very much of a 50s 60s 70s uh cars are all that, that are in the corral yeah. cool well, look yeah. at that torino convertible yikes that's beautiful. Yeah. So um, if you're just joining us, um, we are at the Tailpipes and Tacos Cruise Inn out here at the Loopy Tortilla in Katy, Texas. And um, we're at Kingsland Boulevard and the Grand Parkway. Uh, just thought you'd like to know that in case you wanted to drop by. Still or have time. Wondering come what we're doing. Come look at some of these gorgeous the cars. sounds different today. Well, because we're outside. And if you've never seen a California special before, come on out to uh, Loopy Tortillas, and it's parked right in front of the building, uh, center stage. Yeah, uh, did you talk to the guy that owns the, uh, I guess we're thinking that it's a 68 Chevy sitting next to you. Have you talked to him? Oh, uh, we, we chatted briefly. Yeah? It's a nice car. It's a very, yeah, it is a very I'm nice I'm assuming car. it's a big block. Um, from what I can tell, it's an LS swap. Oh, okay. Well, that's a highly modified car. Yeah. Well, yeah, everybody's doing Everybody LS, LS swaps. LS motors. Um, okay. Well, you know, we've lost Mars. Well, I think he went out there. He's, he's trying to uh, oh, okay. download the first hour so we can play okay. the play oh, it okay. at the end of the show. All right. All right. He's working over there. All right. Well, very good. Well, uh, hey, it's a pleasure to meet you and see you again. Thank you. Not good, that good I remember seeing again. you the first time, but now I will. He needs to get back on Prevagen. Oh, God. <laughs> no, I need, to, I need to double down on the dosage. That's <laughs> what I need to do. Yeah, they do have the extra strength formula, but it's $10 more. So I'm not willing to You're unload. Cheap. I, cheap. $35 for a bottle of that stuff. It's a dollar a day. Yeah, but I, I can't uh, remember. I was going to say, you'll remember what you did. Yeah, something like that. But at any rate. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your time coming yeah, to talk about yeah, the car. We, thank we you sure again. Cool car. Yeah, very very much so. All right. Uh, this is uh, the uh, in-wheel time car show. Uh, yeah, we have lots of distractions and lots of things going on here that um, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to get Mr. Mars to sit down over here and do his car review. But clearly he is... is he's, he's working on something. We, we don't know what he's working on, but at any rate, we, we have some other stories we can get to. And um, well, you know, would Mercedes, you like to do that? Yeah, you know, Mercedes is bringing back the Maybach name. Yes, I have and a story about okay, that. Okay, well, I'll let well, it's you... Well, okay, go ahead. Well, you know, it's been gone for a while, and Maybach was its own brand, though it was built by Mercedes. It was the uber luxury car that Mercedes built, and, and Maybach is to Mercedes uh, on the ultra-luxury side of things what AMG is to Mercedes on the performance side of things. So uh, I, I think it's kind of interesting that they're bringing that brand back considering that's going to be three, four $400,000 car, and they're going to sell every one they can build. It's actually uh, this, the current Maybach sedan starts at $173,995.10. Cents. 
Uh, it's called the Maybach S580 4Matic sedan powered by a 4-liter V8 bi-turbo with 496 horsepower. Well, it's less price than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, less, 180. That's the base price, 173,995. And 10 cents. And 10 cents. And I figured out what the 10 cents is for because I know that the Maybach that they had previously all started at 400,000. But That's they were all kind of limo cars. You know, you had a, somebody – uh, would drive you places as opposed to taking it for a spin yourself. Well, of course. Well, of course. James would drive. But James, do you have any Grey Poupon? No, that, that was a Rolls-Royce commercial. So, Mr. Mars. Howdy. Um, I think that uh, what we're going to do here is is that we need to you to do your, your car review. Okay, I was... Thinking you were going to do yours first. But I, I can I do that. No. Um, uh, I read the instructions for today, and I thought you were first, Mars. Well, um, it depends on which instructions you read. But I'm good. Uh, actually, I am first. Uh, you know, you so want me? Yeah. So I'm going to do the Jeep Cherokee, right? You're going to do that next. All right. On uh, next hour. So, so let me go ahead and just do this. So we didn't need you to hurry up and come sit down. Don was, n was reading the wrong day. Well, I, you, you need to read this note, too, before you get too far gone. Okay, 703 West Grand Parkway South, Katy, Texas, 77494. Is this your phone number, 281-392-2322? No, it's the phone number for here. Wh and why am I reading that? Because that's the, the correct address of where we are. So we're on Katy Freeway, though. No, we're not on Katy Freeway. Yes, the address for the building is on Katy Freeway because that's Katy no, no, Freeway. No, no, The address for the building is 703 West Grand Parkway South. Stop oh, West screwing Grand Parkway South. Stop screwing it in up. In Katy, In Katy. In Katy, Texas. It's not on Kingsland. It's on Grand Parkway. Oh, for God's sakes. Could, could we do a rewind on this? But if you just come to the intersection this, this of Grand Parkway and Kingsland, you'll see us. It's easy to get to. 703 West Grand Parkway South. Got it. And for those that live in anywhere in Texas, this is Highway 99. We call it the Grand Parkway here. Just saying. All right. Time now for this hour's car review. Whether you like it or not, I'm going to do it. Please do. The 2021 Mazda CX-9. It comes in several uh, trim levels. The Sport, the Touring the Carbon, the Grand Touring, and the Signature. I had the Signature all-wheel drive. This is a, considered by the government as a small SUV. We like to call it a medium-sized crossover. It will seat up to seven passengers. In other words, they've squeezed in a third row into a midsize. And, yes, there's not a lot of room back there. Uh, exterior changes from last model year, very minor. Exterior features, sharp-looking grille with high-mounted headlights, chin spoiler, and faux brake duct openings in the front end uh, wheel well trim blacked out c and d pillars so it makes it look like it's all the floating one. roof no kind of i guess i hate that word floating roof no it's a roof that's painted a different color and this is not that blacked out c and d pillars steeply raked rear hatch glass kind of gives it that sporty look what i liked about it the overall styling yeah, it gets an a plus Interior highlights, quilted leather seats are available. Mine had that. Uh, best designed interior I've seen in a while. Uh, it's certainly further up the trim level, uh, more options uh, that are included in it. So the further up you go on the food chain with this particular car, the more options, the more are options there are. Second and third row climate control is available as well. Uh, cargo and trunk room, well, small with the third row up. With the third row down, it's plenty of room back there. What I liked about it, third row is good for throw-down trips with the kids. You can pop that up. Sorry. There we go. Okay. So, uh, sorry, we had a, a power failure, and it was my fault because of, my, because of me. So, at any rate, to can you continue on with the uh, review, 
the I think that the new infotainment technology in the 21 Mazda CX-9 uh, really could use a little help. Uh, oh, why? Just the the usability of it, the driver interface, or it's a bit, it's a uh, yeah. So a little it, more it complicated. It's to too use. complicated to drill down, is what it is. Is it is it like a touchpad or a spinning wheel? It's got all of that stuff, and you know, to go from uh, to change radio stations or or to change uh, actual frequencies if you want to go to FM or to Sirius XM, or you want to go to AM radio, it's much more complicated so than it's all not of that. Th so there aren't any redundant buttons to speak of? Because um, I, I no. know that, that's something a lot of people like is to have the uh, the redundancy of buttons on it because uh, that'll <laughs> – Yeah. Sorry. Uh, yes. So I, I apologize. So uh, the power cord for this computer was supposed to have been here an hour ago. And, it, and it's, it's stuck in an Uber somewhere at some wrong address. Uh, at any rate, so on with the review of the 2021 Mazda CX-9. Uh, it has a 2.5-liter turbo four-cylinder engine in it that turns out 227 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque through a six-speed automatic transmission. Gets 20 miles per gallon on the city, 26 highway for combined at 23. I got 22.8 miles per gallon over 327.1 miles what i liked about it uh nice power for this crossover believe it or not and i think that it gets all of that uh because of uh the turbo four and the 227 horsepower connected to the six speed automatic transmission uh what could use improvement i think that it could probably get a little bit better gas mileage or they should offer a hybrid option what i liked uh very nice ride quality in this as far as uh, improvement is concerned, I don't think that it could really use any. Base trim price on this is 46605 Price is tested, $48,100. Wow. That's expensive. Yeah. Base model price, however, is only 33960 Now, as far as its competitors, you're looking at the Ford Explorer for $32,225. The GMC Acadia for twenty nine five fifty five, and the Toyota Highlander for thirty four eight ten, and that is my review of the twenty twenty one Mazda. Read, read what's on the paper. CX nine. <laughs> well, I I got a lot going on here. Yes, you do. So there's that. And you're getting the stink eye at the moment. I know, and I I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't I don't know how else to say Katy Texas than I than I said it. At any rate. So uh, thank you so much for joining us here. We are at the Tailpipes and Tacos Cruise-In at the Loopy Tortilla out here in Katy, Texas. There's only one Loopy Tortilla in Katy, Texas. But there's Texas. plenty of them throughout the city. By the way, and and the, this but event but is but only but here at this Loopy Tortilla in Katy, Texas. But uh, some people go to the other ones just to have good food and good time and good drink. Or by mistake. Uh, you got to know when to stop. That's all I'm going to tell you. That's my only advice, son. All right. So uh, we do have another feature here, World Racing Calendar. Um, do we have that? Nope. Okay, we don't have the world racing calendar. Because <laughs> I already went through what it was. The racing series. Well, you can't because, you see, this is, called a, this is also called a podcast. Yeah. And so the people that listen to this particular Segment. podcast don't nece necessarily listen to the yeah. one that we did it okay. in earlier. Well, the racing that, seasons. I, how many times do I need to explain the that? The racing seasons are coming to an end. The only active series that's out there right now is Formula One. They have the Bahrain uh, International uh Formula One race is next weekend, and then the Abu Dhabi, which will be the season-ending Formula One race, will be the weekend, uh, two weekends after that. And uh, uh, Hamilton has captured the Drivers' Championship, and Mercedes has captured the Manufacturers' Championship. Honda is pulling out of Formula One, uh, pulling their whole engine program out of Formula One, though they'll still leave the engines there for more people to develop but it won't won't be honda branded anymore so that's it all right well thank you very much and because of our earlier power outage um uh, and i'm not going to power outage it again uh so we're just not going to do all that <laughs> is that okay i think so too
So, in other words, what we're going to do is Thanks, we're going Dave. to what we're going to do is we're going to just go ahead and start this new segment of the show right now. Oh. This is the award-winning car talk show in real time. Your weekly go-to all things automotive place today coming to you from the confines of the Tailpipes and Tacos event out here at Loopy Tortilla in, in Katy, Katy Texas. Texas. Howdy, along with Mike out of this world, Mars, King Conrad DeLong, Jeff Zekin, David Ainsley. I'm Don Armstrong. We are so glad that you could join us today, and uh, we really uh, do appreciate all of that. Thank you. And thank you for all of these people out here that have uh, cruised in, because uh, here at the Loopy Tortilla, they're serving breakfast tacos. Mimosa, Good breakfast tacos. Mimosas. They also have Bloody Marys here and other delightful things. Have you had any? You have. Good. Yeah. Why don't you put that? Uh, why don't you put that headset on? And Mike, why don't you introduce our next guest? So joining us now is Carrie Snyder. Carrie's got that cool-looking '69 Cuda sitting out there. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, oh that one. Oh, yeah, that one. Mm -hmm. So t tell us about the Hemi that's in it, because it says Hemi on the it side of the Hemi. scoop. So I'm assuming thing it's got a, a Hemi. Hemi in it. It does. Uh, it has a 2006 57 base. Pull this up just a little tighter. There you go. It has a 2006 57 base Hemi in it. Uh, we first put it in the car back in Fourth of July 2005. Oh wow! So it's been in and out many times. Uh, finally got it on the road about two months ago. This is the second place it's been. It's got a whole 200 miles on it since we got it together. Good look. Very very good looking car. As soon it as is. it pulled in. Uh, it caught my eye because I'm, I'm very much a fan of that first generation uh, Barracuda and this one especially because it's the notch back. It's not the fast back. So, um, you know, a, a little bit different for what a lot of people expect because that was originally economy car. Yes, sir. Everybody's used to the fastback, the big glass window, because of the Hemi under glass. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And the uh, BO23 cars, which were the... Uh, factory Hemi cars that, that drag raced with, you know, names like Sox and Martin. So what what got you to put a uh, a new gen Hemi, what I'll call a newer generation mm -hmm. Hemi, into it? Was it the uh, did you find one that was wrecked and the parts are available, or did you buy a, a factory crate motor? No, um, I've always wanted a seventy one Hemi Cuda. Well, the availability of a seventy Hemi Cuda for a guy like me is <laughs> nil. <laughs> yeah, and I had this. This car I bought in 96, it had a 340 in it. It was a fun little car. Oh, yeah. And in 2003, when the Hemi came back, I thought, man, that would be neat. So me and some friends, I bought one from a wrecking yard, the motor transmission computer harness. Nobody made anything for them. So we got together on the 4th of July weekend, pulled the 340, and got to work. But based on funds, I was never able to complete it. So it's set for a long time off and on, and now everybody makes everything for them. And over the last uh, year and a half of being retired, I was finally able to finish it. Now, from 2001 to now, excuse me, 2005 to now, with the help of a lot of friends, we've been able to get it done, get it tuned, get it on the road, and now I can enjoy and it. And enjoy it. Yes, sir. So what, what transmission does it got? It actually has a 727 manual valve body reverse pattern in it. Oh, wow. What, 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 wait Kinda a minute. What, what, is, what does all that mean? <laughs> a it all means he's not a Mopar guy. <laughs> that's fine. A 727 is an old school Mopar transmission. Torque fight. Yes. Okay. And uh, Three speed? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Manual valve body just means it shifts like, say, like a four or five speed without a clutch. Hard. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Uh, I did it for financial reasons. Eventually, it'll get an overdrive uh, in it, but right. uh, I had more, to get it on the road. Yeah, yes, yeah. sir. Had a, had a friend years ago, put well, he put a clutch flight, put a clutch in front mm -hmm. of it instead of a torque converter yes, sir. so that he could launch it with his clutch. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it was just shifting it like an automatic. Yes, and, sir. of course, now this is back in like 70, 71, so it was, it was a cool thing to do back then. God, mm -hmm. you're old. <laughs> Well, but again, the torque flight back in the in the '60s and '70s, the torque flight was uh, Mopar's beefiest transmission. It could take the most power uh, with an automatic in the automatic world on a Mopar product. So yes, sir. And this transmission is built to handle a lot more than this motor will put into it. 
Um, I got it from a buddy of mine that was running it behind a car that was about 750 horse. Oh, wow. My motor's only about four and a quarter, so we've got no problem. Under stressed. You don't (laughs) have to worry about breaking a transmission, beating on the car. No, no. So what final drive ratio do you have in it? I got 391s in it. Oh, so it's uh, it's a little buzzy going down the highway, is it? It's fun. Um, <laughs> again, I've only got... Sings a lot. It does. I've only got 200 miles on it, so I'm still getting used to it. Um, it it's been off the road for so long that I just get a big joy out of it. A yeah. friend of mine, the gentleman with the Daytona, mm-hmm. um, got me to come out here today. This is only the second place it's been since we did get it running. Um I I love it. It's it's like I said, I've had it since '96, and now I can enjoy it. Have you lit the tires up on it yet? Uh, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Not in an area. I'm big on this. Not in an area where uh, there are people. Good. Or I, I'm. I'm just really big on that. Yeah, yeah, we're we're not interested in having you do it here. No, I will it's, not. We, we want people to behave here. There's a time and a go. place. Yeah, and this yeah is no, no, I wasn't it? suggesting that we do it here. I was just right. asking if you lit lit it up. Yes, you sir. just started driving it because you can. Yeah. <laughs> well, I had to test and make sure that uh, everything was good. Research yes. had to do the research. Right. On it. And after all, I am a teenager at heart. Well, I would assume so. Building that kind of a car. Yes, sir. So I'm sure when you wheeled in, it, it's attracting quite a bit of attention because it's the the car looks good. You know, we were talking before about uh, some of these cars. You know, everybody throws an LS in something. You threw a Hemi in it. Yes, sir. And and it should have a Hemi in it ultimately yeah. as a, as a Mopar product. Um, and is did you go out and buy the um, the electronic package for it, or did you guys adapt what you took out of the salvage car? To Actually, make work? I didn't. I bought what's called a Mega Squirt system. Uh, it's a standalone computer that a lot of people use, um, but it, it's it, it's actually very user friendly. Um, and is it is it designed for the Hemi? No, it's just designed to run a, co- a computerized car. Okay. Uh, there's a, a program that another company makes, and I got that program from them. Works awesome. Well, and you know, a lot of people don't realize that uh, with onboard diagnostics, there's a commonality whether it's a GM or a European car or a Ford or a, or a Chrysler it's still product. still under the hood, the same components, the, the basically. O, yeah. OBD2 all f- has the same action. They might do it a little bit different, so that's why the Megasquirt program, the Megasquirt uh, package on it uh, can be adaptable to whatever brand you have underneath it. They actually yes. call it Megasquirt. Yes. It's uh, a lot of people with uh, Miatas. You, you see them, I'm sure, in your show throughout your mm-hmm. yeah. studies. They run Miatas with LS motors, Miatas with different things Five in Five-liter Mustang motors in it. They do. A lot of those gentlemen are running a meta- mega squirt system. Don's jealous. Yeah, I am Very. too because I've often thought about trying to do something like that, but I you know, messed it with the computer and stuff. I didn't realize there was like a, a, a generic. universal generic set up that you could do something with i'm more familiar with the old dribbler system myself <laughs> <laughs> that that was my problem i couldn't figure out how to make it work thirteen hundred dollars always been your problem that's, not, Mike. That's, that's actually not a bad price either no and so with that how does it connect to the electronics of the engine the you know the the sensors and stuff does it do you order a mega squirt that fits a hemi or do you order a mega squirt and then you have to build the harness to make it fit EFI Source is another company. Mm-hmm. They make the harness. That okay. bol- that So it was all plug and play. There were three wires I had to plug into the car. Uh, of course, you know, power. Power ground. Power ground and... Um, Igni- well, probably an ignition Yeah, feed. the ignition. I'm sorry. Yeah. I had to think about it. Power uh, ground and ignition. But it was very simple to do. Uh, even for even for an old uh, soldier like myself. Well, that's pretty genius on them to build a, a, a universal or a, a system adaptable because uh, they'll sell a whole lot more of them uh, because so many people are doing these mod, mo- uh, modern engine packages in the older cars. Yeah, yeah. Partic- particularly the trucks, like the C10s, it's real popular. And that just makes life a lot simpler if you can do something like that. The seven-year-olds next to Yeah, us. the 12-year-olds down there still giggling over it. But, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty cool. It so, 1200 bucks, and then how much for the harness? Uh, I got my harness, computer, program, and everything from EFI Source, was the company's name. 
and I spent a whole fifteen hundred dollars on it. Oh, that's not much. No, not much no. To, to do what you did. Right. So Compared what did you what you pull the Hemi out of? Truck or car? The the original Hemi came out of a two thousand four truck. The one that's sitting in there right now, uh, just because of uh, some things that came, that happened, come out of a two thousand six Charger Daytona. Okay. Buddy, buddy of mine built a four twenty six for his Daytona. This motor had some head work in a cam, so we threw it in here when he put his 426 in his car. And um, we're – yes. Um, oh, forgive our children here. No, no, I – we're good. Yeah, I got you. So is, is there – is there – you're pretty happy with this engine package that's in it? Are you going to go to anything uh, different, maybe jump on a 392 or – the future plans are because these uh, 06 motors. A elephant? No, 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 no. <laughs> this car weighs 3,000 pounds. That's too much motor for this car. Um, this The 06 Hemis have a problem with dropping valves, as I'm sure you guys through your well, research. Well, it's cam issues. Well, the cam issues I understand, yeah. yes. But it, it, so when this motor dies, and it will. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll uh, Find shall we say, one. help it. Yeah. <laughs> but when it does, the 392 long block. Is twenty eight hundred dollars from Chrysler. I'll for buy the a long three, block for the long oh, that's block. A, that's actually pretty cheap. It, it is. is. So I'll buy a long block, put my t- my accessory drives and stuff on it, drop it right back in the car, reprogram it, and be done with it. Well, I have to tell you that three ninety two is bad to the bone. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, I agree. I've, I've had an opportunity to drive one of those uh, in in a current car. Wow. And I think it's more than enough motor for that little three thousand oh, pound yeah, car. Oh yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> that that the, the one that's. Currently in the the Challenger, uh, it's more than enough motor. And uh, you know, to me personally, uh, don't get me wrong, I, I love the Hellcats, mm-hmm. I love the Red Eyes. I all, love all that. Mm-hmm. And it, that's, but it's way too much horsepower. Yeah, when you get to a certain point where it's it's not what you could consider usable, a, a muscle car that you can drive every day of the week and then go to the track, it becomes a little more, a little more tracky right. than, than than streety. Right. Is that a word? Tracky than streety. Tracky than streety. Okay. Boy, we are adding to the uh, the vocabulary the vocabulary today. We're doing our part. Street unruly. How's that? There so you go. So let me ask a question because I know back in the day, Mopar did build some, a small number of Hemi Barracudas. Yes, sir. Did they ever build one in a notchback? To my were they knowledge, all fastbacks? they were all fastbacks. There's one car that was built. I can't remember who built it. I think it was uh, Tom um, Hoover, and it wasn't a production car, but it was called the Ball Hemi, and it was a notchback. Okay. And Tom Hoover of the uh, track. funny car fame. Tom yes, Hoover. Okay. And it was a uh, what they called a uh, Ball Hemi, and it was built on a 440. Oh, that was uh, that, that. <laughs> your, your fan club is here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's all good. But it was it was built on a 440 based and it was called a ball hemi. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but why no, did not they production. call it that? Because the heads and the way it was it built. Because it took balls was, to drive it. But it was We'll be here all day. <laughs> Don't forget to tip the waitress. I think it's been all day for just the, you know the past 15 minutes. I think. Oh my God. Oh. All right. Love yeah. it. Well, thank you well, so Carrie, much for stopping by. We appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. I appreciate it, guys. Love it. Love what's yeah. going on out here. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. We are at, thanks again for stopping by. We appreciate thanks. you. Um, we are at the Tailpipes and Tacos Cruise Inn at the Loopy Tortilla in Katy, Texas, which is on the Grand Parkway just south of I-10. Let me make that perfectly clear. It's the Loopy Tortilla in Katy, Texas. You are, you're going to be in so much trouble. I'm just not. I keep, could, keep picking that scab, Don. I, 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 I've said over and over, it is, it is Katy, Texas. There's only one Katy, Texas. There's only one loopy tortilla in it. This is it. Just saying. They're all inside. All right.